Hello, hello, this is Jonathan and you're listening to the Johnny Talks Podcast, the place where we help you achieve your financial goals. Hola amigos, hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And if you're a new listener to the show, special warm welcome to you. I really appreciate you tuning into the show. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. I appreciate it even more. In today's episode, we will speak to my good friends Dragon Gal and Dragon Guy from the Dragons on Fire. We recorded an episode two years ago, yeah, time flies, as Dragon Guy was about to retire early from his career while Dragon Gal was already retired. I thought it would be interesting to follow up with them on how they experienced their early retirement, especially with the pandemic that hit just a couple of months into this early retirement. We will also talk briefly about the minimalism challenge that Dragon Gal is going through at the moment, and she has some great tips to help you reduce your clutter as well. Fun fact, I actually added the topic of minimalism spontaneously during the conversation, so yeah, I added something that is supposed to help you reduce stuff. But okay, <laughs> anyway, joke aside, this episode is for you if you want to hear about the real-life story of how to handle a crisis during early retirement, but as well of how to handle a crisis in general. So without further ado, let's hear the interview. Hello, the dragons on fire. How are you doing today? We're doing great. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, yes. thanks for hosting us. Yes, a great pleasure to have you on. Uh, for those who were not there uh, two years ago, uh, it's their second appearance on the podcast. But what I wanted to do and the reason why I reinvited uh, the dragons on fire is to have a follow up on their story. So in the first episode, two years ago in November 2019, I will link the episode in the show notes. We talked about Dragon Guy uh, leaving his job to retire early. And Dragon Gal was already retired and is still retired. <laughs> but yes. I wanted to, to uh, get back in touch with you guys. I mean, first of all, because you're good people, good friends. Oh, and and it's you. good to talk to you. Um, yeah. And as well to, to see how you navigated the pandemic, the, yeah, your habits, your retired life, early retired life. I want to to get to know all of this to as well, yeah, help the listeners uh, in their financial decisions and as well to to give a bit of inspiration or a roadmap. You know, you never know. I mean, uh, it might happen to others. Uh, you know, they, they retire early and then uh, a major crisis happens. So, yeah, I wanted to go through all of this. So maybe first of all, how is the retired life? Well, it's always been great for me, honestly. Sure, the pandemic was definitely a road, a uh, bump in the road for us. But I really always feel so much gratitude for the fact that I have had the privilege of being able to retire early. It just brings me so much joy to be able to use, use my time on my own terms. Mm -hmm. And spend most of my day in a fairly relaxed state it feels wonderful perfect yeah i think for me two years um since my retirement date i'm i'm glad i did it and especially with the pandemic i mean the timing worked out really well for me that um just the thought of actually working through the pandemic even though work probably would have been remote and at home i'm glad i didn't have to deal with that and that i could do my own thing and not feel that just like with the technology that, you know, I could always be reachable and always have to be, you know, tethered to my job. So I'm just been really enjoying the last two years. Okay, very good. So, yeah, so you, you retired from your job, but then you still work or at least part time. You, you just mentioned it, um, Dragon Guy. Then I want to know a bit. Yeah, so uh, maybe Dragon Gal first. What have you been busy with yourself uh, you i know that you're doing volunteer work etc have you taken on further projects I, I think i saw something about a youtube channel so can you tell us sure. a little bit what you've been doing in the last two years sure absolutely right before the pandemic started really honestly i was doing some contract work as well i decided i missed teaching small children and they brought me so much joy And I was able to go back and do some contract work. Well, that stopped when the pandemic started. Sure. And so, and so did a lot of the volunteering, but I was able to find some volunteering online. I taught a U.S. citizenship class online, and I also tutored some permanent residents who were interviewing to become U.S. citizens. And that was just so incredible for me to be part of their 
experience of becoming a citizen. And all my students pass, by the way. So, <laughs> and uh, let me see what else. I did. I started an Etsy shop. I started two YouTube channels, one of which I'm not really doing much on. We joined a business competition. Now I'm doing some contract work again. And teaching online. And that is definitely very different from teaching in person. I cannot imagine what a lot of teachers have went through with that whole transition. And I do, I do a lot, quite a bit of reading every day. We have our healthy habits routine that we go through every day as well. And, and all, and my parents also live right down the street and, and I see, I try to see them every day. Well, that sounds uh, exciting, busy. I'm already tired before my retirement. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole idea of uh, being bored in early retirement has not been an issue for us. Um, you know, for me, so I did in 2020, I did, I had a couple different contract opportunities, one in the first quarter right before the pandemic. And then I did another one in September for about six weeks, all online. Both of those opportunities, I worked with people I had worked with before. And so they reached out to me. So I was not actively looking for any work, but mm -hmm. some former colleagues had reached out to me and I was like, mm, let me just try it. I think the first one I did, I really just wanted to be able to be able to say that I did it and kind of experience what it was like doing contract work. It was it was part time. It was about 20 to 24 hours a week. And I went into the office two days a week and worked from home two days a week. And then towards the end of March, as it finished up, I stayed at home permanently. And then the second one was all remote and it was probably about 15 to 20 hours a week and um it was a good experience but i kind of realized that maybe about two-thirds of the way through each each engagement i was ready to move on mm -hmm. so i think that it was fun in the beginning that okay this is new i learned something new and i got some experience but after i got that initial experience i was ready to do something different um so i haven't done anything since i have not been active in really connecting with people that might have opportunities i've just sort of laid low from the work standpoint have done some volunteering for um, some political stuff. Uh, we did texting last summer before the election, which was nice because you could do it all from home. And mm -hmm. this year I I got certified to help people register to vote. So I can hand out applications to people and turn in their applications so they can become registered to vote. So that's been fun. I've been to a few events for that um, and hope to do some more in the future. And then the other big thing that we did is we... We always love to travel, but we made sure that we could still travel. We took a lot of road trips over the last year. I think we went on five or six different road trips to mostly like national parks and state parks. So places where we could be outdoors and socially distant and, you know, just enjoy nature. And so we've, we've had a good time doing that. And that's, that's kept us busy. Yeah, very cool. And one question I have uh, specifically for you is, you know, okay, before when we talked uh, last time, Uh, you were about to quit your job. So that was a time when, let's say, you need a job or, you know, you were depending on this income or like me today, for example. And now when you went to this contracting job, actually, you don't really need the money because you were financially independent. So how how did you perceive that? Uh, how did you perceive your job knowing that anyway, you don't need the money? I mean, did you slack off or, uh, I mean, I don't think so, knowing you, but I mean, Uh, how was your perception? How was your attitude towards this job? Um, I think for me, it was, I, I didn't have to push myself mm -hmm. the way I had to put, thought that I had to push myself when I was working full time. I was not using this job to get a promotion or get a raise. Uh, it was using it more to just have a different experience and to, you know, help out some former colleagues. So I think the pressure was off. I felt a little bit more open to being like, I'm sorry, I can't work now. I can work later today. Oh, can I get back to you tonight and do that? Because I'm out running errands during the day or I'm, you know, exercising outside for mm -hmm. you know several hours. So I felt like I had a lot more flexibility. But I also think because I didn't have that need from a career standpoint to do it, that that's probably where I got a little more antsy, you know, two thirds of the way through it, where I was ready to stop. That I was like, okay, I'm not getting as much out of it anymore. I don't need to do this. Um, I just, I'm ready to sort of move on from it. Mm -hmm. um, there just wasn't that need to, to, to need to, you know, excel at it. So it's like, okay, I understand what this is about. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, and then of course I have the, the big question uh, that uh, I wanted to know is of course, 
you retire really just before the pandemic. I think it was November 2019. Then I think your plan was early January or something. That you, When did you fully retire uh, to, to remember us? So November 1st, 2019 was my last day of work. Ah, okay. Okay. It was then already. Yeah. Okay. So yes. then a couple of months later, okay, the pandemic hit. At least it was with the... Uh, we started the lockdown in March 2020. I guess for you it was similar uh, over yes. there. So yes. yeah, what happened in your mind? Uh, because you're like, okay, uh, I'm retired, <laughs> and now a major <laughs> crisis happens. I mean, and I guess we never, we both never been to into a pandemic before. So it's all new. But I know I remember from last time that you were investing in a crisis, even in 2008. So. What went through your, your mind, your head? I mean, your finances, your calculations, your lifestyle change, and then bam. I think, you know, obviously it was definitely from a financial standpoint, it was crazy to see how the wild swings in the stock market in March of 2020, and we lost a ton of money really fast, but I didn't do anything differently. Um, I, obviously, since we weren't making money, I wasn't investing anymore. I did take advantage of some opportunities to tax loss harvest, mm -hmm. which basically I sold some losses and put them into something similar and so that I could, you know, book some benefits on our taxes. I know it's a thing here. I don't know how that is like, you know, in other countries, but otherwise, you know, we had a lot of cash when I retired. I think we had five years worth of estimated living expenses in cash. Mm -hmm. So had done the math and realized that, okay, we should be able to be okay with this because we had, you know, several years of living expenses in cash that we weren't reliant on the market. Unfortunately, everything rebounded pretty quickly. So that was almost a, a blip on the, on the big, big picture when you, when you look at it now. But I think I felt a lot better knowing that we had that cushion and that if you think of, you know, financial independence, they talk about like the 4% rule, um, we we probably had we had more money than what the four percent rule required, so that cushion I think was important to us, and mm -hmm. that's maybe a lesson that you know it, it's it's easy to kind of do the math and say take your expenses multiply by twenty five that's what you need, but you know the stock market could go down and suddenly you don't have that, or your expenses could go up and suddenly you don't have that. So having a little more cushion I think, was important to me, and it definitely made me sleep a little bit easier during the pandemic, beginning of the pandemic, when things were yeah. chaotic? Sure. As a couple, we really talked quite a bit about how our retirement was going to look like before he actually joined me in retirement. We, we created something called the Retirement Manual. And um, on that piece of paper, which was it is a living document, we, we, write down, we wrote down what we thought some of our activities would be, our expectations of each other. We also had to go through, you know, what are, how are we going to split the chores of our mm -hmm. house? And we also wrote quite a bit about how we were going to fund our early retirement, how we were going to move our money around and where our funds were going to be coming from. And so I feel like this retirement manual really helped us stay calm yeah. Because we would just be like, okay, we we're going to refer back to what the manual says. Mm -hmm. and, and we knew that's what we would need is to have this document when so that when things became emotional and unstable in the economy or, or what have you, we could say, okay, let's refer back to the document. <laughs> what did we agree on? What did we agree on during yeah. calmer times? Where are the adjustments that we need to make? We already talked about how we were going to move the money around and how we were going to fund our retirement. So we felt, I, and I don't really, I'm not as financially knowledgeable as he is, but we have an agreement and an understanding as to how our finances would work. And so I think that helped a lot during the pandemic because it, it was a kind of a panic to see everything drop that quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we just felt like, okay, we have our plan. We will adjust it accordingly and we're going to stay flexible. Yeah, I, I like the idea of this manual, of this plan. It's like, don't panic. At least let's go to the, what does the manual says? And it's something you read. I, I really like it. It's really cool. Yeah. I think uh, everybody should have it actually. It helped a lot. It mm -hmm. helped a lot to kind of give a structure, but to also... It's something we check in on, I think, what, um, once a month? We're trying to do it every week now because I think things are becoming, 
again, a little, you know, transitional with the, with the pandemic entering and kind of a new phase, I feel like. So we try to check in mm -hmm. quite often on just how we have meetings to kind of go through our that touch on the retirement manual, but also what's happening with us. Mm -hmm. Communication is very important. Sure, absolutely. And uh, OK, so two specific question on the in investing part. So you mentioned, uh, yeah, we we had a cushion, an additional cushion. So was that in terms of years of uh, amount saved? I mean, usually uh, you, you mentioned the 25 years of expenses saved, but you had a bit more. Or how did you plan this cushion? So, you know, interestingly, we didn't know much about the financial independence movement until 2017. And Dragon Girl researched, you know, how mm -hmm. to retire early and stumbled upon Mr. Money Mustache. And that opened up the floodgates for me to learn all about it. So when I understood what the math was, which is, you know, they say financial independent 4% rule or you have 25 times your annual expenses and investments, we we were already past that. So we were we were already financially independent. So we had that cushion. So it was already there. What we did before I retired was just figure out how are we going to structure it versus investments versus keeping money in cash to help us, you know, whether the first few years of retirement. So um, we made sure that for, for the longest time we were investing, but then I think probably the last year we actually started to build up the cash cushion a little bit more mm -hmm. just so we would have that money in place. So it was just a matter of where we directed our investments as I approached early retirement. We had a five-year CD ladder. We started with that, though we've changed that strategy because of the interest rates currently. So that was one thing we did, mm -hmm. which I think helped. Right. Okay. And then we, we live off our dividends too from like a lot of our investments. So that helps too. So yeah. I've got a, a couple of different you know places that we have money coming in and that are easily accessible to us. Okay, very good. Now you're in the retired uh, lifestyle. Are you still investing as much as before? Did you reduce or you don't invest at all and you just uh, withdraw money uh, every month or something every now and then? Yeah. So when I was working my contract job, um, I did invest some of that into a retirement account that was, but generally speaking, if we're not making any income, we're not, we have nothing to really add to our investments. I do. There are ways out there. I find bank accounts that, you know, pay higher interest for small amounts. And so I do move money into that. I have I have a handful of accounts that will pay three or five percent interest, but it's not small amounts, like a thousand dollars here, five hundred dollars there, so nothing big. But yeah, I have no I have no income. We don't really have income that we can, you know, throw back into the stock market. But everything we're still fully invested. So our investments will grow, they'll go up or down as the market does. They'll, they'll give us dividends and all that. And we'll we'll you know monitor that over time. Mm -hmm. Dragon Gal is doing a, a small contract job right now. Which right, which that'll pay maybe le that'll pay less than two thousand for this whole year. Yeah, and and then so Dragon Guy is also doing some credit card hacking, and and as he said, like some bank account bonus bonuses as well. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And, and then I was wondering as well uh, on your expenses. Did did you since the pandemic? I mean, since you retired. Let's put it that way. Since you retired, did you make any changes to your daily habits? I mean, the, the shopping, uh, I know you've been doing some road trips. So did you change anything on, on your travel budget or daily expenses? I would say 2020 last year was one of our lowest expense years ever, mm -hmm. even when we were working and pre-financial independence. And a lot of that was due to the pandemic. We, we weren't traveling. We did a couple of road trips, but it was our car. So I didn't need to buy airfare and all that. We had cut a lot of the costs out prior to that that we didn't feel were very uh, meaningful to us. So I think you know our financials have done well this year. Our, we're spending more, but our health insurance costs have increased. But as we expected them to, mm -hmm. that's been another you know big challenge for for Americans is what to do with healthcare. You know after early retirement, since we don't have guaranteed coverage until we're sixty five with Medicare. But um, we had that budget into our expenses so we're okay with that but i think you know expenses have not been a problem for us we've managed to you know do a lot of work to our house this year and still come in under budget well we added more well, well, we well. the house renovation was quite a bit but but that was but that's a separate budget <laughs> yeah. but our regular budget 
we're fine on. The house renovation was definitely above the normal budget, but we counted that as a separate budget. Yeah, I, I should clarify, <laughs> yes. Our, our normal budget includes things like stuff breaking around the house or, <laughs> yeah. you know, getting our trees trimmed every couple of years and lawn maintenance. That stuff, you know, things will break and we budget for that and we're fine. We did do a separate renovation project, which I consider almost more of a capital investment in the house. And that was quite pricey, but, um, you know, we should get a lot of years out of it from that investment. And, you know, we're happy with what we did. It costs a lot of money. But again, I keep that separate from our actual budget. Mm -hmm. well, what would you say to someone? Uh, I think you, you get everything under control. And uh, I, I, I insist, I like that manual. <laughs> but, but what would you say to someone who, let's say, uh, yeah, in the same situation, who is, let's say, retired early? And um, so it's obviously someone who manages his finances or her finances well. But when a crisis happened, what would you say to this uh, person? I think it's key not to panic. Mm -hmm. And if you have a plan in place, refer to that plan. I was following the markets a bit more in 2000, in March of 2020, but I kept looking back at our plan and realizing, okay, if it gets, if it goes down more, we're at this position and we should be okay. If it goes down even more, we should be okay based on X, Y, and Z. And, oh, we can, we need to, we can cut this cost and that cost and just not do this for a while so mm -hmm. i think it's really understanding so where you spend money how you can cut back your costs and just what plan what's your plan what plan in place do you have and how how to continue to execute on that i think someone's just like ah, i think i'm there i'm gonna quit and then not pay attention to anything they're doing fine right now but i think in march 2020 they probably would have been a little more paranoid so it's really just kind of stick to the plan Yes. So and, basically, you know, it's to have a plan regardless of the time and be prepared. I mean, put uh, some guidelines in that manual or plan to to face those situations. I mean, you never know when they can happen. Huh? Yeah, that, that's right. And what I would say, though, is a little different from Dragon Guy. I would say that mental health is really important. Sure. Yeah. That admit to yourself you are panicking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that it, admit that, that it is stressful and that it's overwhelming, that there's a lot of uncertainty. I think that is what the pandemic really brought out for so many of us is, is how to cope with all of this uncertainty. And I think sometimes that is what, what, it, what the problem is, is to understand how to get back to equilibrium and a sense of peace after you're experiencing all this turmoil and stress. And, um, And for me, it's about, okay, I just have to admit that I am overwhelmed and feeling really uncertain and just to let myself feel those feelings and then go back and look at the manual. <laughs> okay, we have a plan. It's We're going to adjust. If we need to adjust, we will just keep monitoring the situation. And and that is is how I get through, you know, moments of crisis. Yeah, and I really like it because... When I asked you a couple of minutes ago, you said I panicked when the when, when yeah. the, the pandemic hit. So I mean, you're it's honest, and it's true because you know if you look at Twitter eh, or yeah. social media, people say, "Yeah, no, uh, you need to continue to invest, stick to the plan," and it's correct. But then people don't say, "Look, I panicked, but I get to the manual." That's a honest yeah. answer. I panicked, uh, and this mental health issue is maybe as well caused by uh, not admitting that you panicked. Sure. Yeah. Sure. No, perfect. Yeah. We like it. Uh, one thing, actually, it was not really uh, planned, but it's uh, triggered me to talk about it. It's uh, I saw that you, um, Dragon Gal, you had a, um, a decluttering challenge. Sure. Can, yes. can you tell us a little bit about that? It's something that interests me. Absolutely. And so this is something that I've done for, this is my third year doing the decluttering challenge. Ultimately, I think minimalism is a part of financial independence. Mm -hmm. So I think financial independence is your relationship to money, but minimalism is your relationship to physical objects. And so what I've learned through the decluttering process is what's most important to me is not physical things. It's experiences, it's travel, it's my good health, it's my relationship to Dragon Guy and my family, my friends, and it's his good health. Those are the 
important things of my life Mm -hmm. and it's not physical things. So let me get rid of the physical things that I'm not needing in my life so I can focus more of my energy on what is important in my life. And what I'm learning is that when you have all these extra physical objects, they you have to maintain them, you have to find storage for them, you have to clean them, and that just takes up a lot of time. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Because and, you, you, I saw yeah. that you had this 1K uh, challenge, so yes. 1,000 objects. Yes, so, yes, and I'm, I'm maybe about 850 right now, so wow. I need to really, for, for this year, I need to really... I'm hoping to make the the challenge this year. Like last year, I think I did 700, and the year before was a little over a thousand. Yeah. So, a- any quick tips on uh, how to find uh, the items that you don't really need? Sure, that's a really great question. I think if you have doubles, then absolutely, you don't always need doubles. Mm-hmm. You can always borrow, if that makes sense. If you don't yes. have something you need, you can always borrow. Ultimately, what what the question for me is, is when I'm looking at an object, do I get rid of this or not? Am I using this on a on a daily, weekly, monthly, uh, daily, weekly or monthly? Am I willing to create a routine around this object so that I will be using it that often, often enough to keep it? And I think that's the question people don't ask themselves. Is this going to be something you actually use? Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Now, very good. I would like to ask then uh, maybe one last uh, question to you both. Sure. So, um, yeah, today we are in kind of in not in limbo, I would say, but I yes. mean it's still going on. The 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 situation. Okay, the stock market is uh, at an all time high again. Mm-hmm. But what's in store for you guys? I know you're still active on the blog, the the activities, the volunteering. Uh, what's in store for you now? Um, yeah, in the coming months or even. 2022, let's say. Um, we're hopeful in 2022 to um, start traveling internationally. Yeah. We have a trip plan booked to go to Germany and Iceland in May. So mm-hmm. we shall see what the world looks like. But we're ready to sort of be out more and, and do some of the things. You know, we've enjoyed exploring the U.S. in 2020 and 2021, but we're ready to <laughs> to, to cr- cross some oceans and sure. all of that. Yeah, we're, we're still playing on blogging and we have our, our YouTube channel that we hope to, you know, we take a little bit of a break, but I think our plan is to is to pick that back up again. And next year, 2022, is a, a, an important election year in, in the U.S. And so I plan to be involved in some of the efforts to get people out to vote and register to vote and all that. I think that'll pick up a lot next year. I'm looking forward to that. I'm really, really reconsidering for myself my work-life balance again. So <laughs> it's it's not I, ending. <laughs> right. I'm considering <laughs> do I want to teach one semester or like, you know, two months out of the year to kind of keep my skills alive? Or what that's going to look like. Uh, I feel just kind of this, in a strange way, a love-hate relationship with with teaching. I, I, on the one hand, I really love connecting with students. And I think to a certain extent, having a scheduled time to teach grounds me a little bit. But at the same time, I just, I want to be free and, <laughs> not, you know, not have obligations. Yes. So, I, so I'm considering what to do with that i'm not i'm not quite sure i'm not quite sure okay very good um look guys it it was a pleasure to to talk to you uh thank you for this update and for your time and i think there's again valuable tips uh, as last time so really good to to hear from you and that you're doing well and enjoying what you do Uh, i hear it's still uh, the retired life is not that easy actually uh, <laughs> so, but but it's it's still interesting, and and that that is great because you really work on what you what you enjoy. You just need to, okay, uh, explore, experiment, like, like every like everything else, actually. So yes. it stays yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank it's, you. It's constantly evolving. And yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, twenty twenty was completely different than twenty twenty one for me, and I'm sure twenty twenty two will be even will, will change as well. Very good. And, uh, you know, before I let you go, we always have our three quick fire questions. All right. And for this time, I 
change the question because you already answered the first ones. <laughs> so let's go through the to, through the new questions for you. So my number one question is, of course, if you knew the pandemic would hit, what would you have done differently, financially speaking and career-wise? Career-wise, if I hadn't have quit, I would have quit. The here, it's there's a lot of conflict in terms of masking or not masking in schools, and that would have just given me so much anxiety. So I'm glad mm -hmm. I quit, and yeah. and I think I would have seriously had to consider quitting if I hadn't already. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel fortunate I quit when I did quit, but if I knew it was coming up and I hadn't picked a date, I would have probably pushed myself to make that change and quit. And I think from, from a financial standpoint, I would have made sure that I felt comfortable with our emergency plan and cash cushion. That, you know, turned out to be a savior, as I said earlier, about like not helping us sleep sleep easier during the beginning of the pandemic. And so that would have been something if I knew it was coming, that I would have made sure that I was really comfortable with what what emergency cash we had on hand and that we we were would would be able to weather the storm. Okay, very good, very good. Excellent answers. Um, number two is, okay, it's still related to, to the same topic, but what is a recent book that you really enjoyed? I know you were, you are both, uh, you both like to read, so yeah. Yes, yes, I adore reading and I do a lot of audiobooks. This one book that I really enjoy and I think actually does a lot for mental health is called Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price. And really, I think the important message for me from that book was about I think we we just push ourselves so hard until we get mm -hmm. sick. And she just really delves into that topic and how it's important to reconsider that. Yes, especially in these times. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for sure. So for me, it was a book I read earlier this year. It was called Killing Lincoln. Uh, there's, a, there's a series of books by the author Bill O'Reilly, and it it's History, history book, but it's written completely as a fiction book. Mm -hmm. So I, I enjoy fiction, and it made a really interesting way of reading about the story of the, the the assassination on President Abraham Lincoln, where it just felt like I was I was reading a novel versus really reading about like you know historical events. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed the 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 kind of unique perspective that they the author there's two authors I can't remember the second author put into writing the book. About, about a historical topic, because a lot of history books I've read in the past, are, they jump around a bit and, you know, they go to different perspectives, but this really felt like I was following the characters as if I was reading a mystery or suspense novel. So I, I enjoyed that a lot. And they have, I think, like 10 other books about different <laughs> historical events of that are written in the same kind of, you know, manner. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Excellent tip, because then you can really dive into the history and it's not that, uh, you know, heavy sometimes. So very right. cool. Uh, and then the last question is, um, what is your number one tip for anyone who wants to reach fire? All right. So for me, again, it's about buying less mm -hmm. really. So like, like you talk, like we talked about with the decluttering challenge, really for me, I feel like in our society, we have kind of this attachment to shopping that there's like, you should, you get happy when you shop, shop. So for me, it's like detach feelings from shopping, detach feelings from objects. And I've been able to save a lot of money over the years by not buying too many objects, really mm -hmm. funneling my money to the things I do care a lot about, uh, such as travel. And for me, my tip is time in the market is more important than timing the market. Yeah. <laughs> so the key is just invest. Just if you can save money and invest it, do it. Don't worry about whether today's the day to do it or yesterday's to do it. You know, every day may be the high, the high, you know, uh, all time high for the stock market, but tomorrow it might, it won't be anymore because it could be a new high. So just invest. And I say that because when I look back at where, how we got where we were, I probably started investing for us back in 2002 after we got married mm -hmm. and set up a process where a little bit of our paycheck every month would go into the market and it would go into certain mutual funds. And that was on autopilot for 15 plus years through the good times and the bad times. And almost to the point where I was handcuffed, I didn't know how to like stop doing that and change it up and simplify it. And maybe I was in investments that were expensive and not the best ones, but because I was consistently doing that and consistently adding money, 
to it while I was working that we were able to accumulate the, you know, be in the situation we're at now and, you know, retire when we did. So just more, you know, the, the sooner you can invest money, the better you'll be and not worry about like, what's the right time to do it or how much or, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, do I, do I spread it out over 12 months or do it all now? Just, just, just do it. <laughs> and keep doing it if you can if you can do it keep doing it yes okay no I, I like it especially coming from you because you went through the 2008 crisis and now yes. uh, with the pandemic in 2020 still kind of going on let's say so yeah really excellent tip and then okay the the, the dragons on fire where can the listeners find you if they want to know more about your travels your career uh Yeah, your, the steps, how you went to fire. I mean, where can they find all the blog information, etc.? cetera? Our, our website is thedragonsonfire.com. And we also are on Twitter at, at dragonguyandgal. Okay, very good. So I will link it in the show notes for the listeners to find it. And uh, yeah, again, thank you again. It was a pleasure to, to, have, you, to have you on. <laughs> thank you so much as well. Yes. Thank you. We enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you learned something from it. And if you found it useful, please make sure you share it with a friend. Or you can also rate the show in your favorite podcast app. This will help the show to grow. So if you do so, thank you very much. And now let's go through the key takeaways for today. Number one, early retirement. You will still be busy doing volunteering, contracting work if you want to, traveling. In short, you will spend time on doing the stuff you like. A note about contracting jobs. The great thing is that you will not need to push yourself, you know, to get promotions or raises, for example. The pressure to work and to get that paycheck at the end of the month is off. So yeah, in short, early retirement remains interesting, exciting, as it keeps evolving. Number two, the pandemic. They did not do anything really different, which I like. They had as well the equivalent of five years in cash when retired. So they had this extra cushion next to those, uh, to what is advised by the 4% rule. It helped them to sleep easier. <laughs> And then a key not to panic in this moment is to have a plan or a retirement manual, which brings me to number three, the retirement manual. I found it an excellent way to write down all your activities, the flexibility on expenses in case of changes. You write down all your chores and how you want to fund that early retirement. It helped them to stay calm as well. And every time in a moment of stress, they thought, okay, what does the manual say? Let's refer back to the manual. What are the adjustments we need to make? etc etc number four another important point mental health and yes it's all right to acknowledge to admit to yourself that you're panicking and that the whole situation with the pandemic is overwhelming due to all the uncertainty this is absolutely normal so be honest with yourself and then go back to the manual <laughs> and then number five the decluttering challenge maintaining storing and cleaning things takes a lot of time a few good tips to help you get rid of stuff get rid of doubles you can always borrow items and then think about am i using the object on a daily weekly monthly basis am i willing to create a routine around this object so i can actually use it so think about this apparently this is uh, what most people don't think about and then to close off the number one tip to reach fire according to each one of them so for dragon gal that was buy less and detach feelings from objects and shopping And for Dragon Guy, it was time in the market is more important than timing the market. So yeah, invest, just do it. So that was it for today. Thank you so much for listening. It really means a lot to me. Make sure you subscribe in Apple Podcast. And of course, please do not hesitate to contact me. If you have any questions or feedback, send me an email, john at johnnytalks.com or connect through social media at Johnny Talks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And amigos, once more, thanks so much for listening, and I'll speak to you next time.